Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. We begin first at four with some tragic breaking news. The search for a Pioneer High School student has ended with the discovery of her body on school property. 15-year-old Adriana Davidson of Sio Township was reported missing on Friday after she didn't return home from school. Law enforcement sources confirm a little over an hour ago, Davidson's body had been found at Pioneer High School's football stadium. Sources tell us foul play is not suspected. An Oakland County Sheriff's deputy has resigned amid reports that he failed to complete a search for a Pontiac mother and her two children who were later found frozen to death outdoors. The tragic discovery of Monica Kennedy and her sons, ages three and nine, happened Sunday, January 15th. Now, two days earlier, the Oakland County Sheriff's Office got a call about a woman and children walking in Pontiac without proper clothing for those cold conditions at the time. The woman had refused help earlier in the day, but a deputy was dispatched to check the area. According to Sheriff Bashar, the deputy did not completely search the area as he was expected to. The deputy was put under investigation, but there's been nothing more from the sheriff's office. Well, a stretch of westbound I-94 in Washtenaw County is back open following a serious chain reaction accident involving semi-trucks. This was the scene this morning as traffic was backed up behind that crash on I-94 at M52 near Chelsea. Here's a closer look at what happened. You can see one of the semi trucks jackknifed, which then caused two other semi trucks and three smaller vehicles to crash. This image shows the crumpled semi cab from which the Washington County Technical Rescue Team had to carefully extract the driver. He's hospitalized in critical condition, awaiting word on the conditions of others involved. MSU women's basketball head coach Susie Merchant has been released from a Lansing hospital following a single car crash that forced her to miss yesterday's game in Illinois. The accident happened Saturday morning. The university described it as minor and says it was caused by a medical incident. In a tweet today, MSU said Merchant is resting at home. There's no word on when she might return to coaching. Merchant has been coaching at MSU since 2007. And now for our first look at the forewarned forecast, let's bring in Kim as we start our work week. How are things shaping up? Well, we've got an Arctic blast coming in and it's just that temperatures tonight dropping down into the single digits. So the snow we have on the ground right now is going to stick around for a while. Right now, temperatures in the 20s, which isn't too bad, but uh, we've had a few flurries out there throughout the afternoon. Those are starting to wind down. It's the temperatures that have our focus for the next 24 hours. 25 in Mount Clemens is the current temperature. 21 in Pontiac, 24 at Metro Airport. But the wind chills, it feels like it's 8 above zero in Pontiac, 13 in Mount Clemens and Metro, 10 in Ann Arbor. The current wind chill in Howell is 10 and only 5 in Flint. Now overnight tonight and tomorrow morning temperatures are going to be dropping down into the single digits and wind chills will be well below zero. We'll talk more about that coming up in the forecast. All right, thank you, Kim. Another Memphis police officer is relieved of duty in connection to the deadly beating of Tyree Nichols. It is the sixth officer to face discipline. The five who were seen on video viciously beating Nichols were fired and now face second degree murder charges. Kimberly Gill in the newsroom with the very latest developments. Kim. Karen, good afternoon. The officer's name is Preston Hemphill. The Memphis Police Department is not revealing what role Hemphill had in the arrest. We do know, though, after the incident on January 7th, Hemphill was relieved of duty but was not fired. The department says that's why the disciplinary action was not disclosed until now. His attorney says one of the videos shown in the video, sh one of the videos shown released Friday came from Hemphill's body camera. The attorney also said Hemphill was at the scene first, but not at the second scene after N Nichols ran to a different location. Nichols stepfather, though, said on Saturday, in his opinion, any of the several officers who stood by and failed to render aid are just as culpable as the five who've already been fired. The five fired officers were part of a special unit targeting violent criminals in certain areas. The so-called Scorpion unit has been disbanded in Memphis, but now nationally there are questions over whether these types of special units should exist at all. We've got to dismantle these systems that allow police officers to uh, dehumanize individuals. Units don't create abuse. 
Abusive behavior creates abuse. You can be assigned to uniform patrol if you don't have the right mindset for public protection. And I think the nobility of being a law enforcement officer, uh, then you should not be assigned in the police department. Funeral services for Tyree Nichols scheduled for this Wednesday in Memphis. We'll have more when you join us for Local 4 News at 5. Until then, Karen, we'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you, Kim. Students returned to class today at the Virginia Elementary School where a six-year-old allegedly shot his teacher inside a classroom. Children faced new safety protocols as their parents dropped them off at Richnick Elementary in Newport News. Two metal detectors were installed and children were required to arrive without a backpack because the school planned to provide them with clear ones. Police were on campus to assist with the transition. It was a great morning, you know, to see the kids come back. We got to see some of them come back last Wednesday and talk to their parents a little bit. But we saw the kids come in today. There was a lot of smiles, a lot of high fives, some fist bumps going on. Uh, we had a lot of officers here. I didn't want it to be overwhelming, but I wanted those kids to know we support them, as well as the faculty and staff. First grade teacher Abby Zorner was released from the hospital after being shot and critically injured on January 6th. The coronavirus remains a global health emergency, but the World Health Organization says the pandemic is at a transition point. The WHO, along with its advisory committee, met to discuss if the public health emergency declaration should continue. Committee members urged the WHO to maintain the global focus on COVID after the emergency declaration is lifted. Now, those recommendations included incorporating vaccines into routine care, maintaining strong health care systems, and also continuing to fight misinformation. The United States still remains under its own public health emergency, most recently renewed earlier this month. Well, the Super Bowl is set. The Chiefs and Eagles square off in two weeks, and there are already plenty of storylines. One of them involves the matchup of the two quarterbacks, Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Hurts. So when they take the field, a long-standing NFL barrier will be broken. Paula Tutman joins us live this afternoon to tell us a little bit more about that. Paula? Hey, Karen. Hi, everybody. You know what? You, you, you said it. Storylines. I mean, these kinds of athletic events often have storylines. But this particular Super Bowl, chocked full of storylines. Brothers against brothers, of, ta of course, we're talking about the Kelsey brothers. First time two brothers will ever face off against each other at a Super Bowl. And then brother against brother with these two black quarterbacks who will be starting and facing off against each other. And that one is really creating some goosebump moments. He's a Super Bowl, baby. That's Super Bowl 21 and 25. Lee Roussan flashed both of his Super Bowl rings from his time with the New York Giants. And he is moved to tears when he thinks about the history being made by quarterbacks Jalen Hurts, the Philadelphia Eagles, and Patrick Mahomes of the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm telling you right now, I'm very emotional. Very emotional right now. It's, it's you know, to actually think about, you know, it's, it's really, 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 you know, life of impacting. He believes that this is history that needs to be talked about because barriers are still being broken. He has seen the sting of racism from the inside. When coaches once said blacks didn't have the acumen to do anything other than block. When it came to guys who 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 were successful, African Americans who were successful in college and they didn't get the opportunity in the NFL at all. And they were they were asked to, to um, to change their position. Andy Hedden, who played for the Giants, and he was a big-time quarterback coming out of North Carolina. And But when he went to Clemson, they moved him from quarterback to outside linebacker. And that happened all the time. I believe it's a historic moment, but looking into it, I don't really care about who plays and what race they are long as it's, you know, a good team. It's amazing to be able to see somebody on TV that looks like me. When you think about it, I think it's uh, it's really relevant. It's relevant that, you know, there uh, probably should be more black head coaches too, <laughs> with that being said. So I think they run, run together. So yeah, I think it's awesome. We went to Tomlinson Middle School in the Westwood Community School District in Inkster. Once a month, they actually meet with professional athletes and business people who give hands-on mentoring. And Lee Roussan is one of those mentors. You're not born winners, you're not born losers, you're born choosers. With his nonprofit Move Your Chains. And two black quarterbacks going head-to-head -to, -head to these kids is more than a game to them, too. The Super Bowl takes, takes place in uh, Black History Month, and that's going to be a big milestone in history. Well, no, I feel it's more that it motivates you, because when you see, like, hey, it's two black uh, 
quarterbacks, I, I'm, I want to be that one day. Former Detroit Lion Devin Funches has played in a Super Bowl game when he was with the Carolina Panthers in Super Bowl 50 in 2015 against the Broncos. And he says this is way more than just about football. We're breaking all the barriers and we're going to continue to, to, to build on what, what, what the standard is right now and just keep it, keep it going forward. We get into that point in the world where we're making that transition to, to bigger and better things. Yeah, you know what? Karen, every time, and I do a lot, as you know, I do a lot of these first stories, and every time I do that story, cue the noise, cue the airplane, sorry about that, uh, but every time I do one of these stories, I do ask the same question, when do we stop doing stories on firsts? And I usually get the general answer, pretty much the same answer, when there are no more barriers to be broken and there aren't so many of these kinds of firsts, people are just taking positions because of talent. So I guess that's when we'll stop doing stories of first. This isn't one of them. Karen? I, you know what? I agree, Paula. It would be nice not to have to do those stories of first, but at the same time, it is a, it is a good story to celebrate as well today. So we do appreciate it. Absolutely. Important yeah. to tell. Yes, very yep. important. All right. Thank you, Paula. Well, speaking of the Super Bowl, if you're hosting a party for the big game, you might be surprised how much less some popular game day foods will cost you this year. We'll talk about that. Plus, when COVID-19 shut down schools, switching over to remote learning, it was really tough, wasn't it? Well, now there's some new research quantifying how much of a normal school year students actually lost in terms of learning and which subject area was impacted most. That story's next.